reason. He'll speak to your mind and, and tell you that, you know, some things are not what it really seems. And he'll let you know that something, he'll try to tell you that something is wrong with you. He'll tell you, you know, maybe too big, too wide, too skinny, too short, too tall, too dark, or too light. That's what the enemy would do. He would speak things in your mind to make you think that God is not going to do what he said he's going to do. But we have to continue to trust God's word and to trust what he said in his word and to wait on him that his word will come to pass because his word is right and it's true. So we don't want the enemy to send distractions our way. We want to be able to defeat the enemy because if you allow the distractions distract you, then you'll begin to compromise who you are with God. You'll begin to compromise and settle for anybody or settle for anything. So we want to make sure that we're staying focused in the Word of God. That we're staying focused in prayer. Staying focused in single and gifted ministry as it is that helps keep you focused and encouraged. Also, you want, you want to know that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. It doesn't matter what the enemy says to you, what he has told you, what he has showed you, you have to continue to trust the word of God that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. There was a time that I didn't think I was good enough to even date anybody, but when I got in the word of God and began to allow God to speak to me, rather than allowing the enemy to speak to my mind, then I had to believe what the word of God said. Because either you're going to believe what the enemy says, or you're going to believe what the Word of God says. And I choose to believe the Word of God that all things are possible. So you never want to get distracted, or you'll become you'll be compromising in who you are, and knowing that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. And actually, uh, there's a pastor back at home, and he tells all his ladies, he said that we are top of the line of women. So we are top of the line of women in where we don't come down and we don't compromise and we don't settle for anything less but top of the line because we serve a God who's top of the line. We serve a God who's able and who's created us to be top of the line. Number two, don't allow your desires and your emotions to control you. There's nothing wrong with desires. There's nothing wrong with emotions. That's actually how God created us. But we want to be strengthened enough in the Word. It's going to take the Word to live its life. We've got to be strengthened enough in the Word to not allow these desires and emotions to control us. We want to keep a standard and not settle for anything less. Because when we allow our desires and emotions to control us, we end up lowering our standards. We end up allowing the enemy to come in and allowing him to speak things to our minds that are not true. When we feel a certain way during different seasons, during Christmas, we want to cuddle, we want, you know, to have some companionship or whatever. We have to be careful during those times of the year. Because the enemy can come in and try and control those desires and emotions in your life. So you want to be careful with that. Because if not, then what will happen is you will end up making rash decisions that can affect your life and affect what God has for you down the road. So you want to make sure that we put our desires and our emotions in its proper perspective. And cast down vain imaginations that enter our minds. Do anybody know anything enters your mind? The enemy speaks to your mind certain things and anybody? The enemy will speak to your mind and say certain things as a single person, as if you're gonna be single the rest of your life, as if you're not good enough, as if you're not gifted enough. So we have to cast those vain imaginations now when they enter into our mind so they won't become our actions. Number three, trust that God is preparing you for your husband or your wife and that he's not forgotten about your heart's desires. Being single is not a 
curse. There's nothing wrong with being single. You can have fun and being single. You can have joy and peace being single. It don't have to be gloom and gloom. Singleness is a spirit-filled, joyful life if you make it. And if you want it, you have to want that joy and that fulfilled life as a single person until God actually changes your life, until he sends that person in your life, you want to embrace the way you are. Because you don't want to reject where God has you. If he has you in this single place at this appointed season, then you want to embrace that. Everything that he has for you, you want to embrace. And if singleness is what he has for you in this season, then you want to embrace that and not reject that. So you definitely want to trust that God is preparing you. Because he said that he'll give you the desires of your heart. But more importantly, you want to make sure that you have God desires. We have our own desires. But I want God desires above my own desires. Yes. I want his will above my will. Yes. I want his, his blessings you know, above what I want for myself. Yes. Because what he has for me is perfect. Yes. And it's right. And it'll be done in the perfect timing. Yes. And not only that, but it'll last forever. Because yes. sometimes in our singleness, we'll make decisions that's not good for us, and then it'll hurt us in the long run. And it don't last. It's just temporary. But when we wait on God and allow God to do it, then it lasts forever. And then He makes us strong in the process. So we need to learn to wait on the Lord. Because sometimes we feel like we're running out of time. Sometimes we feel like we're getting too old. Sometimes we feel like, okay, I wanted a certain amount of children at a certain age, but I'm getting too old to have children now. I know for myself, I had a goal. I wanted to get married at 25. I'm 37 now, and I'm still single. At 25, I wanted to have three children. I'm 37, and I'm still single. But you know, I had to continue to wait on the Lord and wait on His timing and to accept what He has for me in His time. Not when I want it, but when He actually wants it. Because when it comes in His timing, everything is made well and everything is perfect. And so, yeah, when I wanted to have three children, I guess the older I got, everything changed. Because I said, okay, I want to be married at 25. I want to have three children when I get married. So now I'm 37. So the older I got, the less children I want to have. Probably five years later, okay. Well, when I get married, I just have two children. I got older, okay. Well, when I get married, I have one child. Because I felt that the older I got, you know, I was just beginning to get too old to have children. But I know that's not true because the children are the blessings of the Lord. But that was just yeah. the enemy, you know, speaking to my mind like, okay, you're getting older, so you don't need to be having any children, you know, at the age that you're getting older to. So that all changed. Yes. But I accepted what God has for me. So whatever He has for me, I will see what He has for me. Amen. And so know that in your singleness, that God is a keeper. Yes. Sometimes we feel in our emotions and in our desires that time is running out and that we can't be kept. Mm. But God is a keeper. And the word says that he'll keep you in perfect peace if your mind is stayed on him. If your mind is stayed on the Lord, then he'll be able to keep you in whatever state you need to be kept in. Because the enemy will try to come in and feel like that you need to give in to your emotions. He'll come in and make you feel like you need to give in to your desires for a quick feeling or a quick fix. But the Lord said that he's a keeper and he'll keep you. I'm 37 years old. And the Lord has kept me. Yes. He's kept me sexually. Yes. And I give him praise and I give him honor. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Because it, it, you know, I have always wanted to be kept. I've got to be honest. I have not always wanted to be kept. And I've been in situations and where I've almost 